All righty, welcome everybody. Uh, it's really funny when you look out at the crowd and they all have masks. You think you're being lost. You um, still didn't see the look like this when you walk the bank. When you walk where? The bank. Oh. And you have sunglasses on. Yeah. 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 Wear, yeah. wear, wear a little hand, yeah. uh, yeah. wear a mask, and you know, sunglasses, and see what kind of look you need. <laughs> Uh, Robert never had it so good. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're in Proverbs. We're no longer in Romans. We were in Romans 14 weeks. How about that? And now we're in Proverbs for the next 10 weeks. And then we'll do Song of Solomon for a couple of weeks. And then go back to the New Testament. Proverbs. Like I told you last week, I have never taught Proverbs. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure I've ever heard a sermon on Proverbs. Uh, perhaps people refer to Proverbs all the time because uh, you know, you've memorized different ones. Uh, it's a good devotional because you can take a chapter a day and read Proverbs for a month and uh, come up with some insight. Uh, you know, we have a lot of interesting sayings that you sometimes say to your kids or people say to you or maybe your parents or grandparents have said to you, sort of like Proverbs, uh, giving you advice on being wise or making a decision or something like that. Have any of you got any favorites that uh, perhaps you told your kids or you were told as a kid? If you don't stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. <laughs> that was my mother's favorite. Yeah, yeah. 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 usually dealing with discipline. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. You're still in the car. Yeah. When you discipline your kid, you expect yeah. to get something out of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like a cry. Uh, what else? Any others? Is everybody jumping off a cliff, or are you going to jump off? Yeah. So that's, I had that one written down also. Yeah. What is it? What did you say? If if you if, if everybody's jumping off the cliff, are you going to oh, jump yeah. off the cliff with them? Because what what was that usually in response to? Your friend. Your friend. Everybody else is doing it. Yeah. 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 How many times have we heard that? Uh, what else? Any others? I'm not so and so's mother. I'm what? I'm not so and so's mother. Oh yeah, I'm not so and so's mother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any others? I was usually met with my response to, but no, I'm what you get, I'm not your mother. Uh, yeah, I had, uh, some of the old ones, a penny saved is a penny earned, uh, yeah, thrift. Uh, one that I told my kids all the time, life is not fair. Life is not fair. <laughs> But there, <laughs> and usually that would follow uh, if everyone jumped off the cliff with his own. A fool and his money are soon parted. Uh, nothing in life is free. Use that a few times for my kids. Here's one of another Ben Franklin. He had tons of them. Uh, neither a lender or borrower be. He had a lot of thrift. Here's one of my grandfather's favorite ones. There's no cure for stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all heard these, uh, especially being in the South, being in Texas, we've probably heard there's lots more that you could do. But today, and for the next few weeks, we're gonna be looking at the biblical ones, uh, which sometimes will sound something like like these. Sometimes we take the, the biblical ones and we put our local twist to it and make it into our own proverb. Uh, let's look at uh, why, why are these included in the Bible? What's the reason for Proverbs? Someone read Proverbs 1, 1 through 4. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for acquiring a discipline and prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving 
giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Okay, that's far enough. Okay, first of all, they, these are these were not all written by Solomon, but he compiled them, I guess. There's a few thrown in from other kings or leaders or whatever else that uh, are in here. Uh, primarily from Solomon. And why is he saying he's put these together? For instruction. For instruction, for attaining wisdom and discipline. Kind of a rule of law. Yeah, for, for having an ordered life. He calls it a, um, a prudent life. What is a prudent life? Boundaries on your appetite. Yeah. What, what's another proverb? Think before you leap. Uh, sort of that sort of thing. I'm giving you some some advice, some wisdom, and if you take that, your life is going to be uh, safer, perhaps, uh, more rewarding, more disciplined. You know. Uh, what else does he say? Doing what is right and just and fair. So what he's teaching here uh, in these Proverbs is to give you insight into justice, of what is right, what is fair, especially in, in people dealing with you and you dealing with people. Um, or giving prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion to the young. So who is his audience here? Younger generation. Yes, he is talking primarily to the younger generation. And he is primarily, uh, I think in, in some, uh, uh, in, in some it, it is, he's talking to his son. Now he had more than one son, but there were other sons in the box here, I think. So he was, in, in one respect, talking to his son, but and his sons, because he had many sons. But I think, as we look at this, and the way that the Jews used this, it was a teaching for all the sons of Israel. Uh, it was something that the Jewish fathers used to teach their sons. And so it is a compilation by Solomon used to for a teaching uh, in how to have a prudent life. I like the word prudent. We don't use that word much anymore. But how to have a prudent life. A life that is disciplined. A life that knows right from wrong, fair from unfair, just from unjust, and in treating people and how people treat you. And more, as we get into these, we'll see in more in discerning. Uh, I, and I think Proverbs, you could almost say it's a book of discernments. It's a book of looking at things and say, okay, is this good or bad? Is this okay, not okay? Is this something I should do, I shouldn't do? This is a book helping young people and others discern life and how to interact with others. It's, it's really, uh, you know, uh, I, as I said, put together by uh, Solomon, uh, 1 Kings 4.32, someone uh, read that, I think it's 1 Kings 4.32. He also spoke 2,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Yes, 3,000 proverbs, and he wrote a bunch of songs, too. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you continue, it talks about people from all over the world coming, you know, he, he could talk about animals, he could talk about plants, I mean, he was a very wise King. God had granted him this wisdom to know so much about everything. 
Uh, I imagine growing up in his household as one of his sons, you would be sitting at the dinner table or whatever else and be talking about something happened during the day and what would dad do? Oh, he'd come out with a proverb. <laughs> You know, and their eyes would probably roll up in their head. There goes, there comes dead again. You know, it had, he, he's got another proverb. He's got another saying. He's got another thing he wants to tell us. Gosh, I've heard this a thousand times. Because what happens here in Proverbs is we see some of these repeated several times. And we'll look at a couple of those. Uh, but he put them together to help the young fix stupid. I guess you could say is, you know, when we say there's no cure for stupid, uh, he's trying to keep people from being stupid. Uh, let's look at uh, verse 7. Someone read verse 7. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Only fools despise wisdom and discipline. Okay. This is the lens that we will be looking at all the Proverbs through. This defines what Proverbs is. This is how we will look at Proverbs based on this verse. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What does he mean by the fear of the Lord? Reverence. Respect. Respect. Honor. <clears throat> Honor. You know, uh, it, it defines a relationship. Before you can really... Uh, access what these proverbs mean and mean in your life, you really have to have a relationship with God. You have to know God. You have to know Him so that you are able to love Him, and out of that love flows respect. Because He says, what about fools? Fools don't respect anybody. Yeah, that's right. They don't respect anybody. <laughs> they have no discipline. They have no wisdom. They have, you know, uh, they feel it's good to do it. Yes. There are seen a lot of fools in the, in the press and the media. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, uh, the Bible, the greatest, uh, I want to say the harshest, Condemnation of a man in the Bible is to call him a fool. When, when God wants to say, to define a man and harshly, he will say, that man is a fool. And what is he saying here? He discipline. He, he, he has nothing. He lacks discipline. He, he he rejects, he rejects me, really, because it, a fool rejects God. Because the only way you attain the beginning of knowledge is respect for God. Fools have no respect for God. They have no respect for anything. And like you said, we've seen a lot of that this week. Tearing down statues and stuff like that. Yes. I used to have a guy that worked for us in our warehouse and he was a black man and everybody loved him. And he would say to these aunties who would tell these young people, you're still going up Fool's Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're still going up Fool's Hill. And once you get to the top, uh, you know, where, where are you? <laughs> okay, so the beginning of all knowledge is through the respect, the honor, and the love of God. Once you've got that in place, then you can begin accepting what's being said here and understanding it. Because a fool reading these would what? Oh, so what? I don't, I don't agree with that. You know, I do my own thing. I know what's good and true or whatever else. You know, I make up my own mind. And, and, and what's the pronoun that, that that comes to the front all the time with a fool. Me, I. A fool determines his own destiny, doesn't he? Which usually doesn't go too well. Uh, 
In fact, uh, someone read nine, uh, chapter nine, uh, verse ten, and, and someone have fifteen thirty-three too. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of a holy one is understanding. Okay, someone have fifteen thirty-three. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Okay. You know, when the, when the Bible, you know, when someone sort of says something several times, it sort of means it's important. Here we have Solomon saying this three times, and it says other places too, but I think he's sort of saying, hey, this footstone, this, this is important. Listen up. Uh, you know, he says it about the middle, and he says it toward, you know, he says it a couple of times in addition to this. Just to bring the reader back to the point, remember, it's the fear of the Lord. Respect that you have for God that makes these, you know, makes understanding this so important in your knowledge that's beginning. Uh, fools have no use for God. They don't cherish wisdom. And they probably don't cherish history or cherish anything, do they? Just whatever makes him feel good at the time. Uh, you could almost say that rather than knowledge or fact or whatever else, they simply run on emotion. Uh, that's why they had that saying, it feels good, you know, it's okay, do it. Um, fools mock God and turn their back on God. They don't want anything to do with God. And throughout Proverbs, we'll see this contrast. You know, we'll have wisdom on one side and the foolishness on the other. Solomon does a wise thing here. Whenever he says something wise, he says, this is how the foolish react. So, once a young man gets all of these things into the head, he could see, you know, uh, it would give him a good idea of when he saw somebody act out there, he'd say, oh, man, they're acting foolish. You know, they're, uh, you know, it gave them a standard to where they can contrast what is going on in the world. Part of this being prudent, listening, How many times have we chosen the wise path? <laughs> and, or how many times have we fallen for the foolish? The foolish ideas or the foolish things of this world or whatever else. You know, uh, is in my own life, I, you know, we tend to call them regrets. <laughs> you know, I, I regret that I did that. Or that was stupid. Or I should maybe I should have thought a little longer or before I made that. That's why I was going to twenty twenty nine say. Uh yes, yes. Monday morning quarterbacking. Yeah. Twenty twenty hindsight. Yeah, if I could only do it over again. Uh, <clears throat> someone reverse A. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Okay, he says, listen, my son, uh, to your father's instruction, what is, what is the difference between listening and hearing? You're accepting. Listening, you're, you're accepting it. Hearing it, it's just like, go over your head. Yeah, have you ever had to hear them? Have you ever talked to your kids? <laughs> and, and you know they they probably heard you, but they weren't listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doing and not doing. Mm -hmm. Or doing and doing all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my wife has corrected me over the years in, <laughs> in this category of hearing and not listening. <laughs> she says, you know, you're thinking of what you're going to say back to me, aren't you? You're not listening to me. You're you're readying your response 
<laughs> and you need to be listening to me. <laughs> and I think it's something like that. You know, uh, we're, we're primed to, you know, respond. So we start thinking of something uh, funny or sarcastic or what we think is wise or whatever else, and we immediately, you know, say that, uh, but, but we're not really listening to what the other person is saying. That's why he's saying, listen, you know, don't just hear what I'm saying, listen. In other words, bring it inside, and let it roll around a little bit and, and think about it. And what, what else does he say? You're not forsake. You're not forsaken. Okay. So really, this is great because he, he is saying both parents have a role in this, in teaching your children, you know, listen to my teachings, and, but don't reject your mother's teachings. Someone read uh, Psalm, I mean, Proverbs 31.1. Words of King Nemo, an oracle that his mother taught him. Okay, uh, this is another king that his proverbs were included in here, in that. but uh, it was from his mother. He is saying this king took his mother's wisdom and is laying it out for uh, the, uh, uh, the the sons and daughters of whoever else. And of course, his proverbs were thirty-one. Proverbs 31 is what? Do you usually hear? Mother's Day. On Mother's Day. Uh, wife chapter. Sometimes uh, at funerals, I've heard it talked about. Uh, uh, a woman who has died, uh, the pastor starts saying, hey, she was Proverbs 31 type of woman. She did all of these things and took care of her household, taught them, and helped others, and did certain things. So. Uh, he is saying, listen, don't, uh, listen to the instruction, don't reject uh, what your mother is saying. Pay attention, absorb, interpret, apply. Uh, and so that's what he is saying to those that are listening here today. Uh, verse 9, someone read 9. Okay, so what is he saying here? Uh, now, my verse says there will be a garland of favor on your head and pendants around your neck. Um, the NIV says a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. What's he referring to here? What do you think he's talking about here? Decorations. Hmm? Decorations. Decorations. Uh, more than a decoration, usually when were garlands put about someone's head? Honor, victory. Yeah, victory, honor, you won a contest or something like that, or you've done something great, generals would get a garland or something like that. So it was an honor. It was a showing of uh, re respect and that you had done something very good or very great. Uh, that's what it was used in, in uh, different times. Uh, Paul refers to uh, that, I think, when he's, sitting, uh, when he's talking about the Olympics that were held, the races and everything else. Uh, the, the winner would receive a wreath or a garland or something like that that he could wear. Uh, and the same thing with the, uh, the pendant uh, around your neck. Uh, a lot of kings to, who bestowed a, a honor and authority would put a chain, a gold chain with something on it and put it around their, their neck. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, David's been preaching about Joseph. When Joseph, you know, interpreted the dream correctly and uh, the king or you know, the pharaoh elevated him to the position of overseer of all the gathering of the grain and everything else. If you read, he took and put a chain over his head, around his neck, and it had some type of emblem on it that gave him the authority and showed everyone else that he speaks for me. He is 
When, you, when he speaks, it's like I am speaking. So that's what uh, Solomon was saying here, is that if you listen and you take these things to heart, it will be like you won the race. Like you're, you know, you're being honored. You also have authority because you will have wisdom. And what happened with Solomon? People from all over the known world came to hear him speak because of his wisdom. And they knew what he spoke was truth and they listened to him and they learned many things. They probably took them back to their countries and used them. So he is saying, this is your reward for listening. This is your reward for not just listening, but making it internal as a part of your listening. You would grant, and, and really, when you, you could almost interpret this as saying, who is bestowing the garland and the chain around the neck? Mother and father. Mother and father, but even more than that. Your heavenly father. Your heavenly father is. You know, he, he, if you have this relationship, and this relationship has taught you the respect and love of God, and you're listening to these words, because these words are written by Solomon, but where were they from? They were from God. Because God had given Solomon the wisdom to put these together. So it's almost saying like God is going to honor you. Uh, God is going to show you favor. So, you know, it, it is one of these things that um, it's almost like saying uh, there is a, I hate to say a reward, but there is a positive outcome to listening and, and understanding and taking in these Proverbs. Okay, so let's, let's get into the middle of one of these. Uh, someone read 10 through 12. My son, if sinners entice you, don't be persuaded. If they say, come with us, let us set an ambush and kill someone. Let's attack some innocent person just for fun. Let's swallow them alive like Sheol, old, like those who go down to the pit. Okay. Yikes. My son... If sinners entice you, don't be persuaded. Why does he use the word sinners here? He's talking about people who don't follow God. Uh, I think maybe, yeah, uh, I think it was sort of a word he, he could have said, don't let the fools. <laughs> Uh, but uh, he used the word sinners here. I, I, I think it, it was, again, sinners are only concerned about what? Themselves. They're only eye-oriented. And uh, so I think maybe he used this as a as an attention getter because, the, you know, if you're reading this, you would say, the sinners. Yeah. Who are the sinners? They're the ones who disregard God's commands. They're the ones who don't want anything to do with God. And he says, don't be persuaded. What's he saying here? Don't follow. Don't, 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 don't follow. Don't follow. Okay. Don't do like they do. Don't do like they do. But it, 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 it sh sort of shows you there is always an appeal, isn't there? You know, the, you know when, when someone is trying to get you to do, do something, what are they going to do? If you're, if you're so reluctant and you're standing there, what, what's the first thing they're going to say? They're going to make it look good. What? They're going to make it look good. You're going to make it look good for them, right? You're going to appeal to whatever it is that you think that will appeal to them to get them to follow you or make that decision, yes? In gangs today, they'll sometimes say this exact 
thing. Let's kill somebody. Sure. If you don't do it, you can't become a member of our band. Yeah. Yeah. And and the appeal is to be a member of something. You know, don't worry about her. You know, you're going to be part of us. You're going to be. But isn't there always appeal? Uh, oh, if you if you just if you just do this, you're going to be rich. Have you ever heard that appeal before? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's just a little bit risky, but the reward, you know, they don't talk about the risk, they talk about the reward. Oh, you can be set for life. Yeah. 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 Don't be persuaded. And it says, if they come with us, let's set an ambush and kill someone. Uh, Wow, <laughs> that's a pretty harsh thing, isn't it? Uh, you know, they have already made up their mind, haven't they? They have already rationalized in their own mind, this is okay. You know, it's like you were talking about the game. You know, others have done it, so it's okay. What I don't understand is, like with the rioters, like it's supposed to be a, a, a peaceful riot. A piece of riot. I wouldn't say piece of riot. That's not a piece of riot. Yeah. But yet, they're breaking into stores and they're vandalizing and everything else. You know, it, yeah, it's because of what's happened the last two, three weeks, and, you know, all of us, I think, have become incensed over the news. I, I even hate to see it, I yeah. even watch it any longer uh, because you look at this and say, what, what are we accomplishing here? Yeah. What, what good is this? Uh, what, what, what are they thinking they're going to change? And, and is what they're doing going to change anything? And uh, we all have that discussion in, 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 in our own minds. And, and in fact, you know, my wife really gained <coughs> sense the last couple of days and, uh, about a guy who was let out of jail three hours later. Yeah. He killed a, a young man. Seven year old who was eating ice cream in their car. Senseless. And you think, where was the justice system that let him out? Where were where was he and because he had been locked up for you know having a, using a weapon, and then they let him out and he goes back and gets the weapon and then and kills someone. And so you know. There is evil in the world. There are fools abounding <laughs> in the world. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I thought of another one. Uh, speaking to my audience here, uh, with age comes wisdom. wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly comes wisdom, but yet there is no fool like, like, like an old fool. <laughs> <laughs> so I would think that even with age, we can't say we've reached the summit, have we? Because we tend to fall for some of the same schemes that others do. Uh, and uh, in fact, you know, who are preyed upon the most by scammers. Yeah. You know, crap. Uh, so, uh, you know, for, you know, when we look at these, you have to think, oh, okay. I can remember when I was young doing foolish things. Am I still doing foolish things? <laughs> and so we have to sort of look at some of these proverbs and update them a little bit and think, Hmm, who, who is trying to persuade me to do something that when I really think about it, I think, man, this just doesn't pass the smell test. Oh, another proverb. Uh, and maybe I shouldn't be doing this, even though, what are they saying? Oh, you're going to be so 
happy, wealthy, powerful, healthy, uh, whatever else. Wrinkles are going to disappear. If you'll just give me this much money. Uh, we're always looking for that army. Okay, so they say, let's set an ambush and kill someone. Attack an innocent person just for fun. It'll be fun. It won't be fun to the innocent person, but it'll be fun because they won't know what's happening. They'll be surprised because we will know. You know, we have the greater knowledge. Even though we're fools, we have the greater knowledge. Um, let's swallow them alive like Sheol, whole, like those who go down to the pit. Wow, what are they saying here? Yeah, uh, they, they really won't know what's hitting them. They will be afraid. They will be scared for their life. They, we will have, what if they're setting themselves up as God, aren't they? In control. We are in control. <clears throat> we can devour it. It's just us. See what fun this will be? We will have all the power. We will have all the control. Oh, it'll be a great thing. And Solomon says, don't be persuaded. Be careful. So we'll read verse 13 and 14. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot with us and we will share it from you first. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think it, in today's parlance, we would say, verse 13, uh, we will find all kinds of valuable property and fill our houses with plunder. We would say that's, that's the hook, isn't it? Here's what's going to happen as a result of this act. You know, if you'll just join us, you're going to get wealthy. Because we'll have all kinds of valuable property and fill our houses with plunder. Because what they're saying here is not, we're not just going to take any old innocent out there. We're going to take somebody who has some stuff. And when we take them, then that stuff will belong to us because we're powerful. We know what we're all about. We're a gang or whatever. Uh, is that appeal still made today? No. Sure. We wouldn't have gangs if it did. We're all we're just full of stuff. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it in the last few weeks. We've seen it throughout our lives. There's always this hook is that what we're going to do will, the hook now is, what we do now will go down in history. We are at a turning point. We're going to do some bad things, but there will be a good outcome. Ever heard that before? The ends justify the means. Yes, it's going to be painful for some people. Some people are going to get hurt. Some things are going to get destroyed. But look what will come out of it. You know, everything will be good. Everything will be better. You know, you will have wealth or power or whatever else. Sounds like politicians. <laughs> How many politicians are ever in college? That would be a good survey to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many have ever listened to Proverbs? Uh, uh, but, you know, there is always the hook that tries to justify the means. And, and what is Solomon? He's going through this in a lot of detail, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Don't be persuaded. Here's what they're going to say. Here's what they're going to talk about. Here's what they're going to be doing. Look at this. Listen. You know, look at these steps and, and the hook. And then what does he say in verse 14? Throw in your lot with us, we shall all have one purse. 
Okay, so what's he telling them? We'll all gather together and share up. Share up. I won't have to say how much your share is going to be, but you, know, no. you, can, you can think you're going to get 75, this. 25. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but what is also saying here is throw in your lot with us. You'll be one of us. You'll be part of our game. You'll have a family or friends or someone who will look out for you or, you know, isn't that part of it too? That's part of the hook also is that, yes, you're going to get some physical things out of this or whatever else, but you're going to get other things that, you know, we will defend you. We, you will be part of us. You, we will always be there for you. We understand you. We understand you. Yes. What's the old saying? Hearts of a better flock together. together. Yeah. 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 Hearts of a better flock together. You find a lot of it in prison. <laughs> uh, yes. But rarely do you see people acting out on their own. They want to have someone with them. They want to be part of something greater or bigger to ensure their own safety or to give them feedback saying, oh yeah, we're all, hey, you know, isn't that what gangs do? I mean, you know, they get there and pump themselves up. You see it before every football game, don't you? Oh, they all get in a great big huddle and one of them starts, you know, ranting and raving about the other team or what they're going to do today and everybody, all the adrenaline starts flowing and everything else and then they run out on the field. Uh, and so, you, you know, see the same thing in the military. Yeah. Uh, some great speeches by generals before battles, pumping up the troops, getting them ready. Same thing, except here, you know, they're trying to get this son to do something that is illegal. You're in an too, and you can add uh, a little alcohol or your pot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just sort of, yeah, because that gets rid of all the inhibitions, you know. Pour the gasoline on the fire. Yep, yep. Yes, yeah. Yes, I won't give any personal uh, stories on that one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, sometimes you do things under the influence, don't you? <laughs> and you, later when you're sober and thinking about it, you're thinking, oh no, why did I do that? Well, because I thought that was a good idea at the time. <laughs> uh, so be careful. But all, all with the promises of, you know, you're going to get something out of this and it's going to be great. Verse 15 and 16. Don't go along with them, my child. Stay far away from their paths. They rush to commit crime. They hurry to commit murder. Okay, so what's he saying here? Uh, don't travel that road with them or set foot on their path. Uh, what would we say? What, what do what, have <laughs> Remember what I told my kids when they say something or want to do something? I, I would say, stop and think for a minute. Is this something that you really, you know, think it's going to be okay? What good can come out of this? What good can come out of this? See how we take these proverbs and, and you know, we use them in our own lives? <laughs> uh, yes. It's a, what is it, we're going by the slippery slope and like if the train gets started, once the momentum gets going, yeah. it's hard to get It's hard to stop it. Stop. And that's why I think Solomon spent so much time in this because you say, once you take that step, be careful because you're heading down the wrong path here. You're on that slippery slope and the next step gets a little easier and all of a sudden, you're sliding down and you're, you can't stop. You're caught up in the moment 
and you are doing things that are going to result perhaps in death or destruction or whatever else and you need to what do we say nip it in the bud mm -hmm. you know you need to stop before you even think about getting started because you have to think that they are heading like he said heading toward destruction heading toward evil heading toward something in this case to shed blood murder in this regard uh, you you've got to step back and look at it and say wow you know uh, in the military we used to say you got to take a look at the big picture here you, know, you got to step back and say hmm what's going to you know, you, you got to have enough sense that you can say they're getting themselves all excited and, and ginned up, but the result down here, this that's not going to be a good thing. So you need to stop before you take that step. They are already on the path, aren't they? They have already convinced themselves and are running like mad to do what they're going to do. Verse 17 and 18. Moses the spread of net in full view of all the birds. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They waylay only themselves. Okay, here's an interesting statement. It is useless to spread a net where any bird can see it. What does that mean? They're not going to be caught. Hmm? They're not going to see the net. They're not going to run into the net. Yeah, uh, I, I think what he's, he's saying there is that. It, it's sort of stupid to set up a trap when the animal you're trying to trap is over here watching you. <laughs> and I think what he's saying here is that, first of all, these are foolish people. Bird brains. <laughs> yeah, bird brains. <laughs> now, if they had bird brains, maybe they would think. But, you know, these are foolish people that are going to run out and set up this ambush, and people are out there looking and saying, they're setting up an ambush. You know, why am I going to go that way? Or, you know, they're all excited about all this wealth and plunder and everything else, a big part of the gang, and they're not paying much attention to what they're doing. How many people are in jail because they thought they were too smart to get caught? Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or they had the perfect plan. Yeah. When someone says, oh, this is the perfect plan, you know, that's a clue right there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the first thing in the military, you know, we wrote all the, you know, in peacetime, you write plans to go to war. I've written a lot of plans. Uh, you know, in various parts of the world, under this scenario, if this happens, here's how we're going to respond. Here's how we move in forces, whatever. Well, guess what? When when the when the battle started, what's the first thing you do? Change your plan. You throw the plan away <laughs> because it it's not going to work. Because most of the time, is it's not exactly like the scenario you envisaged or it's happening faster or it's different forces or whatever else so these big thick plans you get clunk, and you start fighting a war uh, and there's a lot of people that will tell you i have a perfect plan, plan. or how about this i have a perfect investment for you if you retire, wow, you're going to just have it all. <laughs> Heard that one a few times. I've got the perfect, uh, well, I've got the perfect uh, car for you, <laughs> or a perfect house, or a perfect whatever, you know. Whenever you hear the word perfect, step back and say, and, and what's the other words? Instead of perfect, what other words would they use? They didn't lose. What? Foolproof. Foolproof. This is foolproof. <laughs> yeah, 
case, I don't know, a lot of people are sitting in jail thinking about the foolproof things. There are a lot of people, uh, <laughs> when I was talking to Barbara about this, she said, oh, Bernie Madoff. Uh, yeah. Foolproof, right? Yeah. And, uh, gosh, down in Houston, what was it? You know what? Bulletproof company. Uh, once we had a, who was the guy down in, in Texas? It was sort of like a Bernie Madoff. What's his name? I can't think. Anyway. They were financial, but I don't remember the guy's name. Yeah. He was saying, similar to, to Madoff, I think. Yeah. He, he built people out of millions. Is that the Enron deal? No, this is somebody else. I can't remember his name. It was a while back, a few years back. Uh, it took him a while to catch him. They got or you know, how about some how about some evangelists on TV? Oh, don't get me started on that. Just, just, just send me this and I'll send you that. I'm going to pray for you and yeah, everything will be okay. Thing is, I think we focus too much on the failures in that regard, so that all of a sudden we think everybody who preaches on TV is a crook. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, we tend to wrap people up. Uh, yes, not everybody who preaches on TV is a crook. Just a lot. Mike, Mike Pence is on today. What's that? Mike Pence is speaking at a church in Dallas. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I like Mike Pence. Hopefully he won't say send me money. No, hopefully he won't. <laughs> I like him in one interview that he did. He said he was a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. Okay, uh, so again, Solomon is going through the process here in very much detail, trying to get his sons, or whoever will listen to this, to understand the dangers. The dangers really, we, we, we tend to think of the young, we tend to think, well, Proverbs is written for the young, but even at our age, we're enticed, aren't we? Foolproof, you know, all of these things. I was so worried about my mother-in-law when I was gone. She's 95 years old, and she gets a phone call, you know, which is a fraudulent call. Yeah. And I tell her, and my sister-in-law tells her, and when Gary was alive, he would tell her, Mom, just hang up the phone. Don't even acknowledge it. Just hang up the phone. Yeah. Well, because they're the perfect, sure, they're the perfect ones. Because you know, they think, yeah, I got a call from the IRS. You won't get a call from the IRS. Yeah. No. I what was the scam that was going on? Oh, when you're dead, they, I, I, I saw this on TV. This couple, I, what the scam was that someone would call you up, pretending to be the sheriff, and tell you about uh, the fact that. You owe this amount of money, and he had a warrant for your arrest, and he was coming to your house now, unless you, you know, mailed him some money, yeah. you know, yeah. and, gift cards. And so this couple got so scared, they threw a bunch of stuff in their car and left uh -huh. and ran. Uh -huh. And it was weeks later before they found them and figured out what was going on. They were scared. Uh, so. Huh? Might have been guilty. Yeah, well, that's true. You know, the money. Uh, okay, verse 19. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy or unjust gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. Okay. Wow. Such is the life of the greedy. Uh, mine says profit dishonestly. Uh, it's interesting to note that <clears throat> a lot of Israel's downfall was due to one. I mean, they were worshiping other gods, but what else? They were greedy. They were greedy. In a number of places, uh, you know, God's prophets were telling them, "You're not. You're, you're stealing from the people." Mm -hmm just to fill your own coffers. 
Jesus told it to uh, the Pharisees uh, and the Sadducees that uh, because they had found, everyone looks for loopholes, don't they? They had found a loophole in because you're supposed to care for your parents. That was one of the tenets that you cared for your parents. And uh, <clears throat> when they could earn money or whatever else, you cared for them. They had found a loophole that's, that said that if you had dedicated this money to God, then you didn't have to use it to care for your parents. So what they were saying is, oh, I'd love to care for my parents, but I'm, dead, I, I'm so pious. I've dedicated all this money to God, and it, so it has to stay over here for God, and I can't take care of my parents. And Jesus said, you vipers, you criminals. Uh, and it feeds directly into this, doesn't it? Making profit dishonestly, greedy, looking at what? Your own self and say, oh, this is for me. I'll be doing it for me. Or, or the worst thing that they were saying is, I'm doing this for God. So I can't help you. Uh, that's a real bad thing. When you look back, all, all of us are about the same age. It took a little bit. I mean, when you look back at your childhood, how many grandparents lived in the home? Oh, yeah, many. It was nothing to have your grandparents living with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, my, my wife, wife, her grandmother lived with them until she died. And, you uh, know, and now, you yeah. never see it. No, rarely. I mean, in certain cases, you do. Well, my mother lived with us after my dad died. My mother lived with us for 18 years. Yeah. But, I mean, that's far and few between. Yeah. And some of it, you know, you know I, I won't say that that's bad on all occasions. Uh, you know, my mother lived with us. It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, harder on my wife than me, but very hard. But, uh, you know, is the family now the same as the family 50 years ago? No. Our society is, our culture is totally about the kids going back and forth with us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's more of uh, how, many, how many grandparents are raising grandkids? Sort of a, uh, shows you maybe the foolishness of our society, uh, the foolishness of the things we allow to happen. Uh, and you know we can you know we can indict ourselves because aren't we the generation that you know had the highest divorce rate of any generation before? And now, kids don't even want to get married. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know. Maybe we didn't read Proverbs enough. And uh, you know, maybe we read it, but we didn't listen well enough. Uh, but this is what we're going to be doing for the next now nine weeks, is going through these Proverbs, sort of just dissecting them, looking at them, and hopefully seeing where they apply today. Uh, because even though these were written, wow, several thousand years ago, and have the fools diminished? No. no. <laughs> if not, we've added. It adds more. Yeah, I, I think the, the problem that I see is that it, it seems so bad today is because we have the social platforms. It's the words every every fool has a voice, does it? You know? And people who have foolish ideas can find a whole other group of fools who agree with it. I always thought, and I, I told a pastor this one time, he looked at me rather strangely. I said, Well, if I wanted to be rich, I would start a cult. Mm -hmm. Because you can start a cult on anything, mm -hmm. you know, especially dealing with aliens or anything like that. 
Hey, you know, hey, Jack. And, and you, all you have to do is broadcast it out there and you'll find hundreds of people who will agree with you and send you money. I mean, what could be better than that? I mean, the ultimate scam. You know, you just have to say, I was abducted or I have this knowledge or I have this or whatever else. And people, what do they say? They, they listen to you and you, you say, hey, come join me. It's going to be good. We're going to be taking off this planet or wealthy or whatever else. We'll be the only ones left. Uh, and, you know, you do exactly the same thing as this game would say. You just put different words to it. You know? And you say, we'll be part of a family. We'll all be together when this event occurs. And we will be, you know, we will be the ones that the aliens look upon as the best, or whatever. Yeah, we can dream up all kinds of things, and people have. You know, there are all sorts of little cults out there, and you just sit back in your throne, send them out to work, and bring you money. It's a win-win for you. <laughs> okay, anything else? Okay. Read Proverbs 2. Because we'll be looking at Proverbs 2 and 3, I think, next week. And we'll talk about those. And think of some more Proverbs that your parents had to say. Here's one. A fool is born every minute. A fool is born every minute. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, who said that? P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum. Yeah. Yeah. There's no record of him actually saying it. Yeah. He, he, he was a. Yeah. He knew how to work the fools. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, he, he, he had this, uh, last day I'll make it quick. He, he had this display, you know, of the, the different grotesque creatures and everything he would have. And he found that the people were standing around too long and they wouldn't go out the exit. So he renamed the exit as the entrance to something else. You know, even greater. But when they walked outside, they were. <laughs> they were <outside. laughs> and so, yes, he, he, he was great. Uh, the fool was born, you know, was born every day. Yeah. And they tend to congregate. <laughs> okay, anything else? Real quick. Stay safe this week. Uh, let me pray you out. Pray us out of here. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these wise words that were written down by Solomon. And we, uh, I guess we realize that uh, they're, as, they're as wise today as they were thousands of years ago, which unfortunately doesn't say much for us. Um, and the fact that we still don't listen, uh, we still act foolish sometimes, but uh, we just pray that you will guide us, especially in these uncertain days. Uh, help us to make wise choices and help everyone else out there, even the foolish, come to their senses and make wise choices. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen.